Well, welcome to another episode of Off the Fence. We have a special guest. In fact, I was just thinking about this, Brian. Uh, we've basically known each other now for almost 14 years. Yes. That's like a long time. Yeah, that pretty is. much. Yeah. But before we get into it, a special edition of the food stuff, uh, we've got Pop-Tarts in front of us. One is name brand. The other is not. Our goal, not for this entire episode, <laughs> but for the moment. We have more, though, if we do yeah. want to our, just snack Our goal on is... Which one tastes better before you know who made it? Okay, mm. so I'll let you two start. Are Go we ahead. eating with our eyes first? Are we like you can do whatever you want? Is that yeah? Because that that's a dead giveaway. It? Yeah, it, it is a dead well, giveaway. Frosting. Well, eat. Okay, make your assessments. This is interesting though, because look, the coverage is very inconsistent. Because mine is fully interesting. Mm. Hmm. This is probably the other side of that one. Okay, it might we'll be. see. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm it's like did a, did a machine away. for sure covered that. Like mm. it was <laughs> for sure was probably a grandma in our kitchen. Some industrial mm, factory mm, mm, just mm. is does eating pop tarts bring up memories? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think it would. Mm-hmm. Especially uh, like this untoasted. Uh, oh yeah. Like oh, grab yeah. and go like on your bike while you're riding to middle school. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm catching the bus, when I was at, we had the bus come to our house. It's kind of funny. And the thought was, the you know, I can't miss breakfast. That's unhealthy. <laughs> so I'm going to get a pop tart so, so that let's I'm just healthy. Get a pound of sugar. <laughs> it's, I'm, I, I, I think we all we went through the era where as long as you eat something that's healthy, when it's like no, no, that's not. Well, yeah, because we were in the Kool Aid era, yeah, where I'd throw right. four cups of sugar yeah. into anything, and it's yeah. yeah. So there's, there's our, fruit in it. So. Have, it's so <laughs> Have you guys eaten both? Or no, you don't have to eat the whole thing. I'm so. really trying to. Need you're a you're trying. Cleanser. Yeah, you need a palate cleanser. Let me know some Go initial. Go get me an iced coffee. That'll clean. Yeah, you just want an iced coffee. Mm, that's I what do. you. That's all you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. Do you guys have any initial? <laughs> what's it? Uh, you, yeah, you stop some, asking me to hurry. That's oh, my I'm, initial. Oh, I'm not God. trying to tell you to hurry. I just know that everyone. Just make sure your lips smack it in the microphone. So this is ASMR and weird. I Actually, don't, don't like do that. that. I don't know why that just feels that makes me uncomfortable. Oh yeah, no. I was like that movie. What about Bob? Where he's mm. just like, mm, <laughs> mm, Doctor Leo Marvin. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. No, okay. I think that you guys. I'm gonna eat. You guys start giving feedback. Okay. So one of them, the um, pastry part of it is much more flakier mm-hmm. than the other one. Is more compact. Maybe mm-hmm. I guess is the best Which way to do you explain prefer? it. I think the compact one. Maybe it's just because of history, because I think I know what it is mm-hmm. in the flaky one, what it is. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. So, so going back to my roots. So my my mom would buy my fam- my dad's an accountant, and I feel like they were really diligent about what they spent money on. But there were certain things that my mom refused to buy the off brand on. Mm-hmm. And so I can tell you that this is the. This is the Pop Tart brand, the mm-hmm. flaky one, and I, I love it. But it's because, like, that was one of the very few things that, and probably laundry detergent, and ketchup. We never bought the off brand on, and this is on brand. This All right, is so Pop-Tart. so flaky is mine, my favorite. The fruit is even better. You can look if you want, but this mm, it's the, whole thing. the the more fully covered one is generic. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And the and the the bit more yep. slathered on like. Mm-hmm. I. It depends what you like with a pop tart. Are you mm-hmm. an icing person or a filling person or a pastry person? I, right. The filling. I like the pop tart filling better. You like the filling, so you're a filling person. But no, no. But I am a flaky. I'm like I'm a oh. flaky person. No, Ryan, I'm a what, <laughs> pastry person. Do you do you prefer one or the other? Like when you're when you're eyeing a pop tart, what are you going after? I'm going after the generic. I like the icing, and they okay. over ice mm-hmm. that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. And sprinkles. Oh, there's so many okay. sprinkles. It's beautiful. What's and this keeps in trend. I also prefer the generic one. We we joke now that Katie likes what no one else really kind of goes my for. Own, yeah. <laughs> but but I'm the generic one. Mm-hmm. I think one is done better. <laughs> it's it's done better. Like there's more icing, which I'm like to me. I'm like thank you. You didn't. Well, cheat that's me. If, you like efficiency though, right? And so that's efficient. The other one, I was like, did you miss the edges? Right. What was it? Was it too tough? To no, get they're the, making it just for yeah, me because I love okay. that about it. So. We're off the fence, but it's it's two to one. Mm-hmm. I still win, though. Still, right. You win, win all the Always. time, babe. That's all the time. I do. But we're I'm off the kidding. fence. I would say the generic, if you're in the grocery store and you get generic Pop-Tarts, you're not robbing yourself. I no. think what we can say. You are not. 
I don't know the price difference, but uh, you're not robbing yourself. Okay. All right. There you go. We're off the fence. Ta-da. Generic. Now we're off the fence on Pop Tarts, and <laughs> I guess I I do want to log this one in the books that uh, I've not eaten all the food. I've just taken nibbles of mostly each week, but Pop Tart, Pop Tart is something I I just approved myself. Uh, it's one I chose not to resist. I ate. Can't let it. Did go. you eat both? Like oh, yeah. both brands? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. All right. So uh, Brian, for those who don't know you. Would you give us a bit of a bio, just like who, who are you and what's life like for you and uh, and uh, who do you live with and what do you do for a living and all that kind of stuff? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, my name is Brian Frioff. Um, I live in Rapid City with uh, my wife and I have a 14-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. So uh, spectrum there, that's yeah. a whole nother talk about that. <laughs> Um, otherwise, I've been in uh, law enforcement for 17 years. Um, I worked with the sheriff's office for 14 years. In the last couple of years, I've been with uh, the South Dakota Division of Criminal Investigations. Mm-hmm. Uh, through that time, I've done about everything you can think of law enforcement-wise, but within the last seven, eight years, I've landed in uh, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. So I work uh, crimes that occur on the Internet, uh, proactively, reactively, things like that. Mm-hmm. So that's my main uh, area. That's where I've been been led to and... Uh, uh, we really, I feel we really make it, make a difference, um, working awesome. that stuff as well as, uh, with the church. Like I moved here about a year before I started with law enforcement. So I've been in Fountain Springs for like 18 years. Wow. Okay. I was here when it was like ready to close yep. and we thought, wow, this yeah. the community, this is awesome. Yeah. And we've been through three pastors now, yeah. but yeah, the third one stuck. But. Yeah. So you got lost. <laughs> that's, 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 so we just, it's about me in a nutshell. So to start with. You're, uh, uh, I remember some of my memories with you regarding law enforcement, which by the way, if you're, <clears throat> for those who want a, a topic introduction, uh, Brian is, is, uh, very involved in what's going on on the internet. And I get asked enough. And I think parents are wondering and even individuals, not even just parents, but, but it does end up a lot being a parental kind of conversation, about the internet, what's mm-hmm. safe, what's not, and all that. So we're going to talk about the world of the World Wide Web and beyond all that. But I remember, I don't know if you remember this, doing a ride-along with you. Oh, and I, and I think we did multiple ones. Actually, I think I can I can remember at least two. There may have been a third one, but I remember the first one I did, I'd never done a ride-along. And you and I show up to, there was, uh, we were at a gas station, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a report of, of, of a break-in, and some vehicles, and so I don't know what's going on. I, I'm 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 just I'm riding along, and anyways, ends up this whole process of I got to see lots of stuff that night and uh, events and all that. But then there was other nights that I remember riding along, and we we're like, the memory was where we ate, and and it was like good conversation, good food, mm-hmm. uh, not a lot of busting the criminals. But um, what I've always admired about you is your approach to all of that has been so healthy. Mm. Uh, at least as I've been around and talk, talking with you and being around you, that I'm like, man, if, if the people out there in law enforcement in this world are like Brian, um, it's cool. So, But let's talk internet stuff. Sure. Uh, I... I'll, I don't... I guess I don't... I don't even want to lead you too much on the first part. Like... Uh, what's some of the good, the bad, and the ugly going on on the internet uh, and how it's affecting us? Yeah, there's everything out there for all ages that's affecting us in in good and bad ways, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is, um, I guess, just with with the teens and and knowing what they're doing um, um, at a time. uh, When when do you give your kid a phone? When Mm -hmm. should they start using a phone? Yeah. uh, what apps do you let them use? What don't you let them use? You know, a lot of these questions are already answered by the applications or or what what's out there. But the biggest thing I'm going to keep coming back to is having that conversation with your kids, even when they're younger. Okay. Yes. Um, we've yeah. talked about it multiple times in church throughout. Is just if you're willing to have uncomfortable conversations with their kids when with your kids when they're little, mm-hmm. yep. then they'll be willing to come have an uncomfortable conversation yes. with you when they get older. It's good yeah. wisdom. So. Mm-hmm. That like with with my fourteen year old, I'll talk about him quite a bit, and we we've done that since since day one. We've just been open and honest with him, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, to mm-hmm. be open and honest with with the audience, you know, I see a lot of Christian families that maybe aren't. Mm-hmm. Maybe okay. they think mm-hmm. if I 
completely keep my kid away from everything in the world, they won't get hurt. Mm-hmm. Ah. And 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 they 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 hide them and keep them to the side, and then a kid will run into a situation, and they won't know how to handle it. They don't have okay. the tools. Yeah. 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 In uh, in law enforcement, other trainings, I'm sure um, you go through in, in other fields, you put yourself in a situation in a training environment. So you know how you're going to react in the real world. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we use what's called force on force training, mm-hmm. uh, where simunition guns, things like that. It's going to hurt when you get shot, but you're going into clearing a building or something. Bad okay. guy pops out, mm-hmm. and then you train that and you practice that. So when it happens in real life, you're able to react to it and you don't have to think about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Same thing with kids. Yeah. Uh, the child advocacy center in town. They have these cards called what if cards, mm-hmm. which are super awesome because mm-hmm. it it goes everything from you find a backpack on the playground. What are you going to do hmm. to huh. someone who cares about you, uh, touched you inappropriately? Okay. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. So that's that's just training your kids and having that conversation ahead of time uh, mm-hmm. on how you're going to react in the situation before you're there. Because we all know we've all grown up. So through middle school, high school, peer pressure, all mm-hmm. that jazz, like if you're in the situation and all the other kids are looking at you, like I guess some going to do what everybody else has, unless you right. have a planned escape or a plan yes. how you're going to handle it mm-hmm. um, before you get into that situation. Oh. So like you said, Katie, no tools. You go yeah. into it with no tools. What what are you supposed to do? Yeah. You know. So uh, let's talk a little mm-hmm. bit then about naivety, because I think you might think as a parent or, or really, like if, you, if, if you're influencing any kid at all, you might think like, well, everyone's got phones, everyone's got this, so it, it must not be that bad out there that you... Mm-hmm. you, you Almost this concept of I bet there's a big enough fence somewhere that keeps you from the super bad. What so let's talk about I'm not intending to be like all doom and gloom, but I do think we need to go let's go to the dark place for a little bit and talk about what's what's bad out there that parents or others may just not be aware of or be mm-hmm. avoiding and thinking it's not true. Sure. So the biggest thing, and I do this in my parent presentations when I do those that the dads out there will remember this, and I'm going to be blunt about it. When we grew up, when we were young, we ran into the J.C. Penney's magazine. Yep. With the lingerie and things like that yep. that we saw. Now, with one or two clicks, hmm. kids start at hardcore violent pornography wow. on their phone. Anyway, this is where they start. That's where we started back in the day. What we saw first. This is where they start. So, where do hmm. you go from there? Hmm. So that's wow. just just something to be aware of that's out there that mm-hmm. as soon as you give mm-hmm. your kids their phone or access to the internet that's you know without any type of restriction mm-hmm. that's what they can access instantly mm-hmm. and even if they're not trying if they watch a video on YouTube and then something else you know like they're it just ugh, yeah I'm, sure, I'm, I'm yeah. still so I'm 44 and I'm Brian I'm still shocked so the Katie and I's relationship functions where if I come across something, completely inadvertently, whatever, I say, look, this mm-hmm. this just was, I just want you to see that I'm not, this This is just sure. showed up on my phone, mm-hmm. Instagram. The other day I got, and I don't even know how it works. I kind of want to talk to you about it. I got a text <laughs> mm-hmm. and I was like, how did I get this text? Mm-hmm. From a number you didn't recognize. No, like it, it wasn't. wasn't yeah. And I was like, here, Katie, I, I mm-hmm. just, I, mm-hmm. but, and I'm shocked. And it, what, it, what it does to me going, so I know what to do. I go to my bride and say, sweetie, um, this just came across my phone. I want to be held accountable. I did not pursue this, but he, I'm like, well, what's what's an eight year old boy do mm-hmm. if they got a phone or a twelve year old mm-hmm. boy or girl? <sighs> yeah, they have, they have so many you know chemicals running through their head. Your your brain's not developed till you're 26 or yeah. 20, you know, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. So you got mm-hmm. brain development. You're learning what arouses you, mm-hmm. and then you're getting these visual stimulations, all this stuff that you know that 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 just is in front mm-hmm. of you. You know, how mm-hmm. do you how do you navigate that? And mm-hmm. I'll come back again to it's all about the conversations that yeah. that we as parents have with our kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard one time in youth group. I also help with the with the youth group at church. We talked about it used to be five kids for every one adult. Okay. To mentor gotcha. a, a, yep. a kid yep. or mentor kids, but that's switched to mm-hmm. there needs to be five adults to every kid. Wow. Well. Mm-hmm. And that has made so much sense seeing wow. my son grow in the the yeah. adults in yeah. his life and stuff yep. like that. We have yep. at wow. least that many strong Christian men speaking into his life, okay. and yes. you see it. You know, mm-hmm. you just yep. you just see it from him. Mm-hmm. So, so it would it would come back to that to where as soon as the kid sees that, they know 
just like you go to your bride, I mm-hmm. need to go to mom and dad and yep. show them this mm-hmm. and tell them like, hey, this I didn't mean to go here, mm-hmm. you know. But that conversation needs to be set up before you're in in the middle of it. Yes. yes. So, what are environments that you would say? I, I imagine there's some common places or 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 stuff that would say is socially acceptable that you would say no, that's not. There, there's danger in those environments. I've actually asked you multiple times, at least via text, hey, my son or one of my kids wants one of these games. W- what are the dangers in and through? I don't know. I don't know. I'm unfamiliar with even the name of the game. Talk to me about it. Would you, that, can we talk about some of that? Like whether it be games or places that they're going to that you're like, hey, there's some dangers there. Mm-hmm. Sure. We'll get over the Snapchat hump. Okay. Oh my goodness. Get rid of it. I'm sorry. It's yeah. fun. Uh, especially if you have it in your family, you can do filters, you can do all this stuff. But what what ends up happening is these these kids add all their friends, and mm-hmm. even the good kids are getting stuff that they don't want mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they think it magically disappears um, after the fact, after they view it. Um, they can send anything they want. They can hide behind it. They can hide their identity because they're they're trying to be someone that they're not. Wow! And they think it's mm-hmm. it's just gone when it after it posts. Um, Snapchat has changed the way they do. A lot of their um, uh, data retention and things like that, where through legal process we get more of that okay. uh, info mm-hmm. now. Uh, whether it's the, just the conversation that they had with somebody okay. or the actual images um, that are sent back and forth. Mm-hmm. Plus, um, well, so hold. Let me stop here. Like, I think some people might think if I deleted it or if it if they told me it was deleted that it's deleted. Yet it is not. It is not. No. Okay. Especially if it's been viewed. Mm. There's, there you go. That's a whole nother podcast of thumb cache and okay. cell phone forensics and how hard drives save things. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's still there. And, or the other person can screenshot it. Mm-hmm. Well, I know I, I get a notification. Yeah, you can, but there's also, you know, there's, there's snap capture. There's, there's other apps that are out there that can, that can uh, wow. log and take stuff uh, wow. off, off of your phone while, while you're using it with somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing about it, uh, there's this thing called gamification, which a lot okay. of these social media apps like your Snapchat has built in. You have streaks. So you get points for how many times, how many days in a row or how many hours in a row you talk to this person, you see their snaps, you see oh. their snaps. So it keeps you coming back. And I'm sure you guys have all heard the term digital heroin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like a digital, yes. So it builds, a, it, it, you get a dopamine dump. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like when mm-hmm. you when you yes. look at it and yes. you have a kid who's in brain developmental stage mm-hmm. and they're getting this dump all the time, this dump all the time. Mm-hmm. And then when they don't have it, there's your anxiety. Yes. Mm-hmm. Their suicide rates are through the roof. Yes. You know, it just, this, you know, it's a good business model to get people coming back to your platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's it's messing with kids. I right saw now. that with Facebook that there's, they, they'll go like, hey, you haven't been... You've got these messages or, hey, so-and-so said something. Don't miss it. And it, it like, brings us right to that fear of missing out, like, place in our brains where we're like, oh, I got to go look at it. When maybe we'd even had some good boundaries set up, but, well, I don't want to miss that. So then you go jump right back in. Absolutely. They're being very strategic. Yep, absolutely. Another thing that a lot of the, especially Facebook and other uh, social media platforms have have built in is – if you read their end user agreement, which nobody does, right? Uh, most of these you have to be 13 or older to mm-hmm. have an account, because mm-hmm. huh. they have taken steps where between the age of 13 and 18 you can't be searched by adults. Um, like okay. they try to protect the kids, they've built this in mm. into their platforms. Well, kids get on. You give a kid a Facebook account before they're 13, they lie about their gotcha. age. They age mm-hmm. out sooner. They can be found. Gotcha. We had just the other day, we were setting up, because we do proactive work as well. We pretend like we're kids online. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we set up an undercover, one of my guys set up an undercover account the other day, and within hours, we had a guy ready to meet, oh, wanting to wow. have sexual relations with him here in Rapid City. Wow. And he wasn't even like actively searching. He just posted the account that he was a middle school kid, and they wanted him to skip school and everything. So Wow. Wow. Um, so, so with that, hmm. you know, it, it's out there. It, it, that's the other naive mm-hmm. part of it. Like, well, it doesn't happen in Rapid City. Yes, it happens in Rapid okay. City. It is through my years of law enforcement. It's one thing that um, I think this crime is consistent everywhere. Okay. Mm. Where some places okay. you'll see one crime higher than the other, but mm-hmm. just because of the access and the internet, mm-hmm. we'll go out in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota, where someone's doing something they shouldn't. Like, it is consistent across the board. It's always happening. Um, 
but that doesn't mean to stay at home and be scared and right, and, and right. hide in your closet. Yeah. Like there's there's ways to navigate that. So let's talk yeah. about those. Let's talk about yeah. ways to navigate this because I don't. I really don't. My intention with this isn't just that we scare people right. into like, <laughs> oh no, because I think if you're mm -hmm. scared, you overreact mm -hmm. typically. So let's yeah. not overreact. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about being proactive. Let's mm -hmm. talk about what we should be doing. Sure. So yeah. what, back to the conversation, have the conversation about everything yes. um, beforehand. That even got into games with my son. Like they, if you don't know, people can chat on video games yeah. or mm -hmm. people can talk to you on video games. Mm -hmm. And he flat just would come to me and like, yeah, I quit playing that. Someone tried to talk to me. So I just mm -hmm. stopped. I'm like, that's cool. At least mm -hmm. you, yep. you came to me and told me that. Yes. Um, otherwise, uh, one of the best resources I know out there is this uh, site by Josh Oaks is his name, and it's smartsocial.com. Okay, smartsocial.com. Dot com, and he does little five-minute clips on every app that you can think about. Huh. And he rates them um, like a, a, a green, yellow, red. Okay. So like green, yeah, they can go. They can, you know, you don't have to watch them that much mm -hmm. using that app. Yellow, maybe some parental guidance. Red, mm -hmm. don't ever touch these these yeah. type of apps. Okay. So, um, he That's also has a, a paid side of his site that you can sign up and do uh, a whole um, social university, I guess, where it works with the parent and the kid together hmm. to have these, to facilitate these conversations. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because the world of just, of saying, well, I just, that that technology is just so beyond me. No, that's not no. okay. Yeah. That, that's yeah. not okay. You, you're, you know, I'll bring this up at the end as well too, but they're just, your kids are going to be making decisions that can follow them the rest mm -hmm. of their life yeah. with that phone or with anything on, on the internet. And and they, yeah. they're not going to wrap their heads around that. Well, and potentially even like when we talk spiritually, some strongholds too, that they're inviting oh into their, that, that can impact generations that, that maybe a parent doesn't even know that is happening or the kid doesn't even realize, you know, what they're jumping into. So there's the practical, like you have a history online, but also then just the spiritual ramifications of, of letting those types of things in. Right. Oof. So that smartsocial.com is awesome for for resources right, for that. Um, we do that even for just to add to that. Yeah. Uh, we we've been doing that for movies. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. anytime my, my kids mm -hmm. will come to me, I'll say, "Hey, Dad, can we go watch such and such?" I'll be like, "Well, tell me what pluggedin.com says," mm -hmm. and they'll go they'll go online. It's a, it's a site that tells you it does actually a similar grading, green, yellow, yeah. and, and red, and talks about well for a teenager, meh, maybe or mm -hmm. kid, meh, no, no. So we've mm -hmm. been using that as a measurement tool going. We'll use we'll trust this information to say if we should go to that movie mm -hmm. or not. And then Katie will watch the end and be like, yep. "Ah, you guys don't need to watch." It. <laughs> she just Googles I the literally end. that's she all does. I do. In fact, though, I got to tell you, lately I don't watch I don't go to the theaters or anything. I just watch the same movies over and over because I just need some steady. Yeah, I need to yeah. know what's happening. Life life is more helpful for me that way. So smartsocial.com, <laughs> good. So LinkedIn.com too. But. There's so many apps out there. You're never going to learn it all. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Right. But whatever your kids have. You should have. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. So you know how the platform works. Snapchat. How many parents know about uh. my, my eyes only? There's a whole separate side of Snapchat, another passcode you have to put in for this area called my eyes only within Snapchat. Just the name of it sounds so bad. So we don't have yeah. we don't have Snapchat. So our kids don't have Snapchat. Like that's just mm -hmm. kind of yeah. And and I think that we also one of the things that we did was um we have like a shared family account and on Apple. And so like Ellie has to ask us before she can add it. And most of hers are for photography and stuff, but we have to approve it and sign in to do it. And that's been really helpful too. Cause then we literally have like a log of. Yeah. Do you helpful. guys, do you guys use all the, the stuff Apple built in on screen time? Yeah. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, but we also even, we, <laughs> we're, we're like even hardcore about it. We, we our kids out, are given yeah. a certain amount of time a day mm -hmm. and they have to log. They have to I sign use, in. I we use this phone or I use this iPad or I use this TV mm -hmm. and, and here's how long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And that, that, I know Android <clears throat> probably has the same thing set up, but uh, with your kids' devices, uh, I know Apple has uh, screen time, yep. Yep. which yep. within screen time, you can limit websites. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can limit when some apps turn off that they just don't have access mm -hmm. to the apps. Um, you can, um, uh, limit whether they can get apps or not. They have to, like you said, yep. it pops up on yep. your phone. I ask permission to get yep. the app, you know. So they've taken some steps that, that are good, just like entry level mm -hmm. yeah. um, working with your kids. And now make that as part of the conversation. Yes. Okay. I'm not doing this because I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. I We're doing this on your phone because we just want to make sure that um, this isn't bugging you at this time mm -hmm. of night. 
that uh, you, you know, we, we can see what websites and stuff you go mm-hmm. to, you mm-hmm. know, it's just, it's, it's just, I don't know, work that out with your kids that, that you guys are on the same page with it and don't use it as a punishment. Like I'm going yeah. to track you on mm-hmm. your phone and, and mm-hmm. watch you. Right. Which that. goes back to the conversations though, having those consistent conversations to let them know Hayden didn't get Instagram until he was 18 and Facebook has just been a, a no, no, mm-hmm. but we, we kind of processed that with them the whole time saying it's not because we don't trust you, but your brain is not fully formed and we want to honor you and protect you and help you set some rhythms too in the way that you... Mm -hmm. I've always talked to him about it. It's like a pet. So like Ellie's got guinea pigs, but the guinea pigs have a cage. Mm -hmm. Uh, The fish have a fish bowl. Mm -hmm. The dog has a leash. Mm -hmm. It's like... And they they understand that like it makes sense. It's like so... So let's do that with a lot of things in our lives mm-hmm. that we, like they just need boundaries. Mm-hmm. They just it's not that by itself it's all evil and it's it's Satan mm-hmm. right there, but but mm-hmm. with boundaries and walls and things, it's how we keep safe. It's how we make things thrive. We're so the, grateful for that guinea pig cage, by the way. Yeah. The other thing that that builds <laughs> is just the, just the knowing that I need accountability when yes. I get older. I yep. had accountability when True. I was a kid. Now yep. I need it. Like that's something that I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I didn't have accountability growing up, so it's mm-hmm. just like, wow. Like it's, it's, it, it, it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like having someone there, not looking over, it's, it's hard to explain, not looking over your shoulder mm-hmm. and watching your every move, but just like keeping you honest and, and accountable yeah. with yeah. everything you do. Um, mm-hmm. Another side of that with phones, just phones in general, and just the way kids are nowadays. Um, there's a rule in our house that um, uh, for the kids, phones have to be a neutral area to mm-hmm. to charge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or, yeah, out of their bedroom. Yep. Don't gotcha. ever let the phones in the bedrooms. Yep. Um, and that just goes back to after nine o'clock at night, who used to answer the phone at your parents' yeah. house? <laughs> Mom or dad, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Mm-hmm. They're the yep. ones who had access to the phone yep. when someone would call. Um, kids are, other kids have the phones all night long. So mm-hmm. they're getting texts. Wow. They're not sleeping, mm-hmm. you know. Playing games uh, and, yeah. Um, bullying, you know, it mm-hmm. used to end at school. Now it follows you because you're just getting text after text after yep. text, things like yes. that. Um, so just phone usage, you know, mm-hmm. the Apple stuff was good, um, but there's other apps like uh, we got, um, and some of our friends have the Bark app, B-A-R-K, mm-hmm. okay. and it's a paid app. There's tons of paid apps out there that you can use with your kids, but that that one's so cool because it'll you can filter the content. So even within their text messages, if there's a message about suicide, a message about sex, anything like that, as the parents, you'll get a notification. Wow. And this recently worked out um, because there was some of our friends that they found out that, hey, your your buddy's saying stuff about ending it in, mm. in suicide and stuff, and they were able to intervene before mm-hmm. it got any further, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so bark. <gasps> dot, it's or just, just bark. Or just yeah. bark, okay. Yeah, there's a there's an app you put on your phone and then the, the kid's... Uh, partner app or whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it goes on the, the kid's phone and uh, then you can, you know, monitor every everything that they do. So, you know, I actually can even think too, you're talking about always circling back to the conversations you're having with your kids that like what we've talked about with our kids is sometimes they feel a pressure that they have to be a therapist or an, uh, an interventionalist intervention however it, it's a load that i don't remember carrying as, as a teenager yeah uh, and yeah. so what is you can bless your kids by going i'd like to help you if you do have a friend yep. that is saying stuff that go, that you're like wow that's a lot to carry and you don't know what to say to them or so, mm-hmm. how to support them mm-hmm. you're 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 help saying i want to walk with you on this i had never thought yeah. about that mm-hmm. i think too though in addition to the text and keeping up and having the bullying come home i think one of the things that i've noticed because i'm i'm really 100 years old in a 40 year old body <laughs> and so i like Snapchat, I literally downloaded it and within 30 seconds deleted it <laughs> because I was like too much. I don't TikTok's the same way. For me, it was just more of a I don't I don't get it and so kids don't have it, we don't have it. Yeah. Like it's just too much. Um but I think the other thing is uh putting content out. I think there's a pressure too that starts where these kids have all of these heavy things to carry, school, interpersonal connections and all of that just in person. But then there's this, I got to keep up with everybody so I get the likes and the views and all of that. It's just a component that we, like we had camcorders. My family mm-hmm. didn't even own one. And so like, but there's we there's a whole second element mm-hmm. that then I think makes it easier for them to be preyed on because if they do get attention and it's coming at them and they're like, oh, well, this is nice. And they it says they're a 14-year-old kid. Right. So, mm-hmm. but it just, it all of that compounds to make them 
even more accessible, I would say, to people that don't yeah. have good intentions. Absolutely. And then even I did another podcast just on victimology and like how I set up my undercover profiles type of thing. Wow. And yeah. one is the kid that gets all, has both parents, gets good grades, all yep. that kind of stuff, because they're always seeking that. They never get the confirmation from their parents gotcha. that they're good mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. So you have one person that just shows attention towards them yeah. and then it just changes. And then mm -hmm. they start in the grooming process and it just mm -hmm. goes from there. It's a real <sighs> thing. You know, it's not just the kids that are home alone because parents are not present because they're okay. working late shifts or a single parent mom or dad. It's yeah. not always that. Yeah. You know. And I think that's a misnomer because we think, well, but nobody's, it's safe. Nobody, and again, talking to our kids, we don't want to scare them, but we want to, we want them to be informed that not everybody is a good person <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and not everybody that says they're 14 on the internet is 14, you oh, know, no. so just processing no. that with them so that they're, again, not afraid, mm -hmm. but aware um, and intentional and, and having that relationship where you're preemptively providing some support and, and an open door for them to come talk about it. It's been huge for mm. us. Yeah, huge for us because it's a terrifying world for parents too. Um, but just to be able to talk through it and that plug in, we have our kids charge their phones on the counter. Yeah, keep and it home, out and that is a yep. game changer. That's been a game changer, even just for for healthy rhythms in life. Yeah. that like it it parks at this time, and you don't need to look at it again until tomorrow. Well, yeah, because I don't I don't want them even being like go one a workaholic. Like, yeah, like yeah. what what do you need to be doing yeah. on your phone or device like mm -hmm. like. I'll That's, buy you an alarm clock. <clears throat> yeah, alarm like, clock. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, so, bark. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I, that, yeah. That's that. And that's just hmm. we're just scratching the surface. Put one other one notes. for kids to make good decisions. Uh, it's called Circle of Six. Okay. Mm. So you, it's for the kids, and then they have six adults that they can reach out to in case of a situation. And it's just you can run it through your lock screen type of thing. So, uh, what happens with that is. Um, they're in a situation and they need an interruption or they mm -hmm. need a way out, anything mm -hmm. like that. They can just hit one button and it just sends to all six people, hey, shoot me a text. I need an interruption. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a phone call. Hey, I need a, you know, maybe a girl's getting too close to a guy and she's just mm -hmm. like, hey, I need an interruption. Then a phone call. Oh, mm -hmm. my mom's calling. You gotcha. Know, mm -hmm. And then has to mm -hmm. take the phone call. And then there's a final one that you can click on that says, hey, I'm in a situation. I need out here's my location and mm -hmm. it's just a one click and it'll send the location to all six people. Wow. Uh, and they can, they have a, a Google map of where they are to pick them up. <sighs> uh, my old boss, he had that worked out with his kids as they went through high school that if you, if you ever sent that to me, you know, no questions asked, I'm going to show up yeah. and I'm going to be the mean dad. Mm -hmm. okay. What are you doing here? Why are you here? <laughs> and then you can play it off as, oh, my dad. And then we'll talk about it later. But empowering them to make that decision to yes. be like, I'm in a bad spot. Hmm. I need help when otherwise they wouldn't be able to get get that kind of help. So. I love that too for even if they're just having feelings that might make them make a choice, even if they're alone and they just need somebody to be there. I love that. I didn't even know that existed. Mm -hmm. It's good mm -hmm. wisdom. You're like a classroom, Brian. Thank you. They, they have other apps too that have like preloaded responses. <sighs> like if someone says, send me a nude and it's like, uh, no, but I'll forward this to my dad and see if he'll send you one or, or your, 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 your buddy in prison is going to be named this, oh, and, yeah. you know, like it's already, so they don't have to think of the response yeah. on the spot. The yeah. response is yeah. already, already created. So hmm. there's all kinds of stuff out there, which is good, but it comes down to, it's not, Hey, here's your phone. Good luck. Right. It's, we need to talk about this. We need to work, work through it. And it's so, not just, and I'm hearing you say this over and over, but the, it's not, yeah, I trust you. Which is true. Mm -hmm. I trust yes. you. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's it's not that simple mm -hmm. as I trust you. Mm -hmm. It's there's a whole group of people you don't trust. Right. It's okay. Yeah. And life I think it's true too. Even like we have we have accountability and boundaries as grown adults working through from budget to what we're who we're talking to and what we're doing. And and I think that's good to start that process. Yeah. As as a, as a child anyway. Do you have anyone we talk about like phones and brains not being fully formed? Which is wild because most people are out of college. Isn't that wild that we're out of college before our brains are fully know, right? formed? <laughs> it's bonkers to me. But um, like, what do you see for age, like age, age, I guess not limits, but just appropriate or best times maybe to do it or times that might be too early for I that think, kind of responsibility? I think that's different for every kid. Sure. Okay. okay. And you just got to know, yeah. know your kid, I yep. guess. 
Um, that's what I've we've seen, seen so far. Yeah, some it is. Very responsible kids and some kids that are like, nope. Yep. They should be nowhere near. Yep. Near that. We have seen that with ours. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah, I think I think that's just specific mm-hmm. on on the age and stuff. Um, one thing I'd like to go back to as well too. Um, most phones come loaded with FaceTime um, yeah. or or whatever the Android equivalent to that is for for the video chat stuff. Um, but that's normally associated with your with your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other video chats out there if you want a place to completely stay away from uh, on the web, uh, like Omegle, Chat Roulette, things like that that these kids are on all the time and it's a live video chat and it says you're speaking to a stranger and then every so often it'll switch to somebody new, switch to somebody new. And it, the roulette, wow. Yeah. And and that's just, I, did, I forgot to bring it up earlier, but that's just like, make sure your kids are not on that as well because that's just, that we, we did it in one of my trainings one time and uh, had it, in this in this area, this uh, big uh, big hall with this big screen, as we were going through learning about it, okay. And about every third or fourth one is some naked guy sitting there, no and way, and just doesn't care. He's looking for a response. He's looking for other naked people sitting there to talk to, you know, things like that. And the kids think it's fun. It's hilarious, you know, to go talk to somebody new, and and it's just always changing. And they think uh, the screen is protecting me in between here, and uh, yeah. It's a. It's it's just another place to to completely oh, stay away word. from any video chats yeah. like that. Anything with the name roulette in it, I'd like yeah. to stay away. From. Yes, <laughs> probably wise. That blows my For mind. Sure. Well, here in a minute, I'm going to ask you. Uh, hey, like final parting words. One I'm going to say is we need to have you like back. We'll have you back on the podcast. We'll go into all these subjects that you've even mentioned. But mm-hmm. um, before we get to final words, what haven't you said that you wanted to say? Mm-hmm. Or you can make those a part of final words. But um, I want not just parents, but even even teenagers who might be listening or watching mm-hmm. to this, as they're processing, what's in my phone? What am I even watching on TV? What am I downloading? What do I have access to? What, what What's the game chat looking like? What do you wish, especially, I'm reading your shirt, you know, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. I would imagine you've got a list of things going, I wish people would, or I wish this was normal for. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Yeah, before I I do that, there is some positives out there. Kids need social media to get into colleges. They need Mm -hmm. social media Mm -hmm. to build their positive digital footprint. So Mm -hmm. posting what you do good in school on Mm -hmm. your Instagram, posting what you do in school on even get a LinkedIn account. Mm-hmm. Like okay. that's what jobs and colleges are using. So that mm-hmm. can be another time or whatever. We, we can dig more into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what I want, especially parents to know, and this will hopefully resonate with them. If you want your kid to learn to drive a car, you just say, here's the keys and go. No, no. Cause they're going to mm-hmm. crash or something, something that's going to change their life forever is going to happen. Mm-hmm. If you want someone uh, mm-hmm. One of your kids to like, hey, you want to shoot a gun? And you just give them a gun and you don't train them in it mm-hmm. at all? Mm-hmm. You don't do that. No. Mm-hmm. So this idea that technology is over my head, mm-hmm. I'm an overwhelmed parent, mm-hmm. I have so much going on, which you do, mm-hmm. and, 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 and you do, um, we have to train our kids in this because we're going to train them in everything else that's going to affect their yes. life for the rest of their life and yes. follow them. Sure. Once it's posted, it's always out there. Mm-hmm. It's on the internet forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need to train your kids in how to use um, use the internet safely, first of all, effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, second of all, and just, you know, we have to build new social norms yeah. on what what's what. So, mm-hmm. hmm. And I love how you... you because I know you well enough, and, and what you've been saying here is the constant, like, have the conversation before the emergency has arisen. Mm-hmm. Have a con- have conversations, have development times. This what you and I we'd call it discipleship times. Have mm-hmm. your your discipling yeah. is what you're doing. Yeah. Your mm-hmm. your your scripture teaches. You're you're training your child up because you will not. They will not always be that little child. They 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 become an adult. They make mm-hmm. their own decisions. Mm-hmm. And so there's this. Our our system of belief is we're disciples of Jesus which means we make other disciples of Jesus. And so we can't leave the internet out of the 
discipleship process. Right. That's that mm-hmm. right. That needs to be scooted over onto the table and say this mm-hmm. is a part now of yeah. the discipleship mm-hmm. process. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, any final parting words? Any anything that you're just like No, that's about it. Okay, got it. There's, yeah, we could we could talk for days. Well, we will have you back. I promise <laughs> you that. Um, uh, thanks for giving us your time. Thanks for, and not just your time, your wisdom. Your... Thank you for the work that you do too. Because oh, it, it really is like stuff that day to day, I don't know that people are really conscious of that there's a lot of good stuff happening, but there's a lot of stuff that could go really bad. Oh yeah, If absolutely. people weren't there being intentional, taking care of it. So thank you for that good work too. Um, really Our agenda rescue. is literally to get people off the fence, uh, basically doing nothing about this subject. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's that's hopefully this bumps some people yes. off the fence. Yep. I it. need to take steps to start training my kid, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for watching or listening. If you if you have questions, thoughts, if if uh, you're like, ah, this has sparked more, you can text mm-hmm. us at 605-250-1224. And uh, we would love to help direct you in the right place. Yeah. Uh, we even maybe see if we can post some of these um apps and, and websites and stuff that, that Brian's brought up that, that people can utilize. And I assure you this, Brian, will be back on this Yay. podcast as we talk more about some of those details and go further in this. But Maybe uh, with Pop-Tarts? I'm here for the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you too. get to pick next yeah. time then. You should get to uh, pick. Thanks for listening so much. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, friends. Bye, friends.